Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. My GF31 cheated on me male 27. Together 8.5 is and have a 2 a daughter. Hey, this is my first time doing anything like this and I've been unable to function for the last two weeks since D-Day was declared. I'll begin by detailing how everything came crashing down and then I'll provide you with the challenges that follow. In all honesty, I believe I'm only seeking advice and direction, since I don't have many friends and am embarrassed to bring up the subject with them. The two of us have been married for eight and a half years, and our daughter, who is two and a half years old, completes the family. It was years before I became suspicious, but it was only in the last four months that I began to watch her Facebook activity on an old phone that was still logged in. The first thing I saw that made me a little uncomfortable was her reaching out to men for conversation. Over 90% came after midnight, and they were all kind greetings such as hello, how are you, I miss seeing your face, or long time in no talk. In fact, she gave them her phone number on a few of occasions so that they would not really mess with Facebook. I had no proof that she was cheating, and I didn't want to insult her by intruding into her personal life, so I said nothing for the time being to avoid offending her. Every several weeks, I would visit Facebook, and I started to notice that messages had been erased. It was possible that they might show up on the notice, but when you attempted to pull them up, they were no longer there. We met when we were younger, while out having a good time. I slowed down since I had obtained an excellent job that required me to work longer hours than I had before. On the contrary, she had not slowed down much and continued to attend the bar on weekends. There were several of our friends, mostly hers, who frequented this neighborhood bar. There were also acquaintances of mine who frequented this establishment because her brother or nice men friends were with her. For 70% of the time, I wasn't bothered by her being there without me the majority of the time. The first time I phoned her was in November, when her company closed at 9.00 p.m., and I was wondering where she was on her way home to me and our child. She then sent me a text message informing me that she was heading to the bar for a few beers. Disappointed, but this was not surprising. My daughter ultimately fell asleep about 11.00 a.m., and since I had been working since 3.00 a.m. that morning, I fell asleep next to her as well. I wake up at 4.30 a.m. and she hasn't returned home. She usually stays up until 5.00 a.m. And this has occurred in the past, but I'm still anxious, so I contact her. She answers the phone while inebriated and says it's not good. She claims she's on the phone with the police and has to get off the phone. So I inquired where she was so I could perhaps assist the issue by not having the vehicle taken. She was with a man at the pub who was a friend of both of us and her brothers, and she claimed she was bringing him home, so she was someplace around his house. We eventually arrived at the location after speaking with her brother and searching for her. She was arrested and sent to prison for Dewey. Her car was already being towed, and her male companion was riding in the truck with her brother. The automobile was found in a random area far from the guy's residence, and it was reported as a strange vehicle that had been left running because it was late at night and I was attempting to deal with the problem at hand. I was simply trying to get my child's mother out of prison in my vehicle back. After I came home, I spoke to her brother and heard the guy's version of the story, according to her brother. They didn't match up when I bailed her out of prison and spoke with her to obtain her side of the story. Both were deceiving. I had a feeling something was awry. That's not what I heard. I informed her right away, and that's not what occurred. Then she simply cut it up to. I don't recall being intoxicated at the time. I bring her home and she remains with our kid while I go fetch her brother's vehicle out of impound. I informed him on the way there that the two accounts don't fit up and he had his doubts but didn't want to leap to conclusions. I go grab the vehicle and open it up to discover her panties laying on the seat. My heart sunk to the floor when I showed her brother, who still had concerns and swore he'd find out from the other person. I went inside the laundry basket when I got the vehicle home to check if she had any panties, but she didn't. I took her outside and questioned her about it. She had just spent the night at her father's house and said that the officers searched her clothing bag. I didn't trust her since I didn't have any evidence. She was upset that I had even inquired and said flatly that she had never cheated on me while looking me in the eyes. I apologized and said that it didn't seem good, which is why I inquired. It's January, a day before my birthday, a few months later. I invited my closest buddy and his brother to join me for a couple beers. I drank too much and passed out. 
However, I observed my best friend's brother staring at my girlfriend. I awoke skeptical, but I drove my girlfriend to work since she is unable to drive at the moment. After I drop her off, I checked through her old phone's Facebook. After I had fallen asleep for the whole night, my best friend's brother was attempting to hit on her over Facebook. She didn't really flirt back, but she also didn't respond as well as I would have hoped. Then I spotted two more males whose messages had been removed. She configures both of them to run in ghost mode, which deletes communications automatically. They were chatting till 5.30 a.m., and we were having lengthy talks. One of the men was the one who had gotten her arrested the night before. The second man was the one she had been deleting communications from for a few months before to the Dewey. I informed her I had seen the text exchanges between the three boys. She admitted about my friend's brother but seemed perplexed and didn't understand what I was saying to the other two. I just texted her back and said all right, and she folded. I'm not sure what you read, but I'm sorry I love you, and I don't want to tear up our family. I begged her to confess since I still didn't have any strong evidence and the communications had been removed. However, I did not inform her of this. Messages using the phrase the Dewey, and I responded to everything. She says, you'd have to ask, I'm not sure what you mean. I told her, how can I believe you if you can't even confess what you did? She says, you'd have to ask, I'm not sure what you mean. I told her, how can I believe you if you can't even confess what you did? I already know I have the messages. She said it was basically just words and silly s. What words did I say? To whom and what transpired? With the DUI. She says, I don't know folks, I don't even know why four times in a row. I told her I'd see her when I picked her up after work. We arrive home and head out back to discuss it. I continued reminding her that I had seen the texts and that she needed to confess. She acknowledged to having slept with him the night of the DUI. And the other man she's been deleting texts from has simply been saying silly sh. I inquired what she said, and she said something about his effort, me and bending me over the pool table, taking his large black D. I almost forgot to add that this was another regular at the bar. We've both been attempting to cope with this for two weeks, and it's still difficult. She continues repeating she wants to move ahead and not look back, but it's difficult for me to do so. All of the deception and betrayal. I tried all in my power to help our connection. I don't know who I can trust, but I adore her. I promised her that we would try to make it work, but it ate me up every day. To be honest, I believe our baby is the only thing keeping us together right now. I come from a damaged family and I don't want her to live in the same way. I'm not sure whether I feel weak for remaining or strong for attempting to make things work. She says it's simple for you to walk away, and I believe her, so I decided to take the tougher option and give it all I had. This isn't the first time she's deceived me. She has lied about phone numbers being men, claiming they belong to her relatives. She has also lied about where she was. Her brother phoned to say she was up to no good and that I should go check on her. She pulled up to the bar at the same time as another man in her vehicle. She drove away and insisted it was nothing, but her actions told me otherwise. Those two instances occurred before to the birth of our daughter, and I expected them to usher in a new chapter in our lives. I suppose not, but I still don't think it would have happened to me. Please assist me since I'm lost. Edit. We have a lot going on in our life right now, including the loss of a family member. But my interest is peak. I want to contact the man and find out precisely what was going on. Is this a poor plan?